So, Gamescom contained some exciting times for Mountain Blade fans, with new features revealed and we were given the uplifting presence of Tailworld acknowledging the game's development further, which is always great to see. Not too long ago, Tailworld released their 11th blog on Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Stally111 and welcome back to Bannerlord Game Talk. Today I'll be explaining the new details about the new features within Bannerlord, for those who haven't read the full blog already. I'm going to try and make this an abridged version so that you can get all the information you want fast, so without further ado, let's get to it. In the siege gameplay shown off, it was intentional to directly show the player controlling the siege machines as they will all be interactable with the player along with NPCs. Something we didn't see was the placement screen. The player is able to place said siege machines in any location they wish to craft a stronger plan of attack when striking a castle or fortification. Once these machines are set up, the player being in charge of the party can order them to fire or move at his or her own will, as long as they are in the right condition to do so. Villages and castles have a semi-integration, from what it seems. Villages have four sides which can contain numerous activities such as farming or mining. However, a castle is much more limited with a lot of space being taken up by the walls, and therefore regular villages can be more useful for allocating certain resources, whilst castles are obviously more beneficial for defence. The castle walls will definitely take up at least one of the four village production slots, but remember it will add a lot of value when defending it. A new thing is that AI lords will change the production and development of their towns and villages as well, so the politics of the world could change drastically over a couple of months in the game. Speaking of AI, the combat AI is also improved, with enemies along with allies using a more tactical approach when being attacked by ranged attacks. Groups of soldiers will charge in formations now, and will change depending on the situation. They also have an improved blocking system so it is now much more difficult to become a master swordsman, taking out armies all on your own. The board games will have variants within the taverns of each faction or nation's territory, with each culture having different interests when playing board games. And yes, they all are inspired by real life games. You can also challenge diplomats within these games during negotiations of sorts, so that could be pretty interesting. Something we didn't see in the footage about the weapon crafting was the sheer detail we can customise too. We are able to make each side and bladed point the exact length we want our blade to be, so the crafting is truly in our own hands. The next point is very small but something that brought a smile to my face was learning that if you ever lose your sword in battle and it is decent enough, you may stumble upon it again, whether it's the man who took it from you or just a random bandit halfway across Calridia. Lastly, in the blog they mentioned that there's still loads more that they want to talk to us about in the coming months, but does that mean we'll have another 3 or 4 months of being out of touch? I hope not. Anyway, I just hope that Tailworld PR improves and they keep us in the loop with everything. Even just a hey now and again on Twitter wouldn't go amiss. Anyway, that was a quick overview of the context from the new features revealed at Gamescom. I hope you enjoyed and more content is sure to come soon. My name is Stanley111 and make sure to drop a like, drop a comment and subscribe if you've not done so already and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.